And I'm Bruce Burkhardt. But just for a moment, let's call it this North American land, because this week I'm coming to you from Mexico, about 30 miles south of the Arizona border. And not too many years ago, this place would have been underwater, because this is where the Colorado River used to flow. And so at this point, all of the water of the river has been taken out for human consumption. So the Colorado River bed is now, looks like a race track. Exactly. It's, it's dry and it's sandy. Believe it or not, the powerful Colorado River used to flow through what's now this dusty drag racing track. Miles and miles of, of land with nothing but sand. So as, as we were driving, I was thinking, you know, it used to be underwater. Izzy Collette is part of Protect the Flows, a coalition of more than 250 businesses dependent upon the Colorado River and its tributaries. Several members traveled to Mexico to see what they hope is not their future. It's a far cry from what they experienced back home. Are you excited? Very, yeah, it's gonna be amazing. Back home with her kayak rental business in the shadow of the Hoover Dam, Colette depends upon the Colorado for her business but knows that's only part of the equation. Healthy flows in the river affect a lot of things, so not only the livelihood of people in Las Vegas, uh, you know, it affects the ecosystem and the wildlife. Outdoor recreation supports 20,000 jobs in Nevada, and millions more rely on the Colorado River for drinking water, agriculture, and industry. But the Colorado's water levels have dropped 35% in the past 10 years. You can see it dramatically in Lake Mead near the Hoover Dam. They call this the bathtub ring. Since 2000, drought and overuse have caused a drop of 135 feet. No, I think that we just need to find balance. That is why Colette and her colleagues came here to Mexico, to see what overuse has done. There's no evil player in this. Jonathan Smith is the co-founder of the conservation group Blue Legacy. No one who worked on any stretch of the Colorado River intended to dewater the delta. It was just an area that wasn't seen and it wasn't thought about. And so one structure after another went up and one allocation after another was filed. And no one thought, really, to reserve water flows for nature. More than two dozen dams and other diversion projects during the past 60 years have interfered with the river's natural flow. While once it flowed into the Gulf of California, now it's barely a trickle by the time it crosses into Mexico. It's been devastating for communities who for generations survived by fishing. We saw this abandoned boat in the dusty soil, a leftover from the time this land was occupied by the Cucupa Indians. Ironically, Cucupa means people of the river. The business owners also got a dramatic look from the air on flights courtesy of Lighthawk. Since 1979, volunteer pilots have donated their time and aircraft to conservation groups for scientific and educational flights. But Colette and the others also got a glimpse of what just a little water can do. It is called La Cienega de Santa Clara a huge wetland and vital stopover for migratory birds on the Pacific Flyway. And it got here by accident. When agricultural runoff proved to be too salty to return to either the river or irrigation, a canal was built from southern Arizona that deposited that water here. A few years later, life. You're not likely to see such starkly different environments like this side by side. Over here, with water, life, over here, without water, death. Welcome everybody. This is the Cienega de Santa Clara. This is the largest wetland in the Delta and one of the most important wetlands in the continent for migratory birds. What sprung up from that water that no one really wanted is now known as the Accidental Eden. For ornithologist Osvel Hinojosa of the conservation group Pro Natura, the resilience of nature here now supports thousands of birds. This place was lost when uh, the delta was, the dams were filling up upstream. But then by this uh, accidental release of water, we, we got restored a 40,000 acre wetland. 
How does this wetlands affect your economy? So yeah, it creates uh, probably about 40, 50 jobs for these communities. It's, an, um, it's a great income. It's, most of the tourism is coming from the U.S. And every winter we get 150,000 shorebirds just here in the Cienega. Secretary of the Interior Ken Salazar says changes are needed to protect the flows for everyone. You know, our attitudes about rivers as a public uh, really have changed in, in the last 25 years where there's now a recognition that there are values that are very important values, economic values, intrinsic to keeping uh, some water in the, the flow of the river. Whether it's rafting or fly fishing or providing the clothing and equipment for those who do, business owners like Izzy Collette want everyone in the basin to get it right. To come here and to see what seems to be a small amount of water that's taken from the Colorado River and given to this area and what a difference that can make. And so being responsible in our uses and also um, going to our elected officials and asking for what, what we want from them. And I think a healthy ecosystem is what we're looking for. Yeah, these lower ones, the water would actually come over the spillways and come We out take right people there. out on the river and you know, we try to educate them about the Colorado and what they're paddling on and that this river doesn't reach the sea anymore. And so to be here and actually see, um, you know, sand, <laughs> uh, it does really, really put it into perspective. The Department of Interior is now studying ways to balance use of the river's water for the next 50 years. Colette and others have visited Washington to advocate for protecting the flows. But I think that finally we, the tide is turning. People are realizing that we need to uh, protect the flows in the river and start uh, thinking about what nature needs in terms of water.